when I first heard about the Spring Fling Pastel Challenge by Sabrina at Sab's Rehabs, I knew exactly the project I wanted to work on. I've had this old rocking horse since my grandson Shelton was little. He'll be 18 this year. And here, if you remember what they looked like when they were new, here's what Shelton's looked like that I still had. But I now have a new granddaughter, or well, she's a year old, Parker. And I thought Parker would love playing on this horsey. So it was time to get it all together. There's Shelton. Um, I, it was time to get it all together and make it anew for her. Here, Jewel is helping me clean it um, with Dixie Bell White Lightning. There was a lot of age and residue and stuff on there, and I wanted to make sure and get all that off before I started adding the slick stick um, because I did want to make sure that, you know, the paint wouldn't scrape off later on. And the mane and tail were not in good condition. They were really faded. So I decided I would just cut those off and figure out what I was going to do later. So here I am getting rid of those. I did cut some of them a little bit too short, but um, it worked out great in the end. is a problem solver that is specifically for putting on slick surfaces like laminate or glass or plastic and things like that to give yourself it's called an adhesion primer and it gives your paint something to adhere to by giving a little bit of what's called tooth on onto your project and I not only did the entire horse the seat I did the mane the tail everything because I wanted with the mane and tail I wanted them to be lighter because I knew what I was going to put on it would you know the brown may show through and on the seat at that time I still hadn't decided whether I was going to cover the seat with fabric whether I was going to paint it or what I was going to do but it never hurts to put the slick stick on there so we ended up putting two coats of that on there. I had one of these, we called them hobby horses back then. I had one of these hobby horses when I was a little girl and all of my kids had one. I think back in, in my day, everybody, you know, all the kids had one. It was a very popular um, toy and the same thing, I wanted my kids to have it because I had enjoyed it so much. And now I don't know if they're as popular as they were back then, but I really think that, that Parker's going to love it. The stirrups weren't in very good shape, and at this point, I hadn't decided what I was going to do with them, but I did go ahead and coat them with the slick stick, and you can see some of the area there at the bottom was dry rotted and all that, so I went ahead and, and slick sticked that too. I knew I wanted um, them to, it to be a little more decorative than it was before, kind of um, reminding me of the carnival horses what is that called the carousel horses and they are usually more decorative so i got some would you bend and i'll put the autumn numbers of these would you bend in the description if you're interested in those would you bend are wood decorative elements that you heat up with either a heat gun or a blow dryer or, you know, I guess put them down in an electric skillet or whatever to heat them up and then they become bendable and moldable and shapeable to your surface. So I had a, a few edges and curves I wanted to go around here. So I, I heated these really well, then I glued them down with wood glue and taped it to sit. And then after they sat up, I came back actually with the blow dryer some more to make sure to bend it in around I don't know what you would call it, his little collar thing there and some around the edges. I wanted to come back and make sure that it was a, a good tight fit there. So I came back and 
um, heated them up a little bit more. But then it's permanent after that. It's going to stay where you put it. It's paintable and, and everything. little step areas that went on the side where you step up to get onto the horse those were dry rotted a little bit and everything and I had my husband just make me a little that's cherry wood actually I hated to paint it but I had him make me a little wooden thing uh, for her to step up on to get on there and then uh, because it was cherry and cherry can often be a bleeder I went ahead and put boss over it and then while I had the boss out I figured I may as well put a coat of it on the wood you bend it's not necessary but I had it out and I figured why the heck not because it needed coats of stuff anyways this was clear it dries clear anyway but I did put it on there to get it good and sealed so it would have a little bit of a smoother texture when I started putting the actual paint on it I think I mentioned that the stirrups weren't in good condition so I went ahead and put some slick stick on those but then actually when Jewel was cleaning those a, a hump came out of one of them so what I did at this point was use Dixie Bell mud to seal in the area where it 
cracked and a hunk came out and I sealed it with this and what I'm going to do it, it wasn't done yet at the point of this video is to put some of that sprayed bed liner stuff on it that's really tough I'm gonna spray some of that on it tape it off spray that on it which it only comes in black and but then I'm gonna paint over that so that she'll have a good sturdy surface to put that on and then I decided my first uh, layers of paint would be Dixie Belle fluff And I did put two coats of fluff on everything. For the pastels, which were the actual part of the challenge we're doing here, I used Dixie Belle cotton and then mixed some of the brighter colors with it to come out with the pastels. I chose Dixie Belle Plum Crazy, Peony, Daisy, Mint Julep, and then two of the DIY making powders in... Fivalicious and Patchouli, I think it was. I'll make sure and put the corrected ones in the description. And I just used some old El Cheapo brushes. The making powders are really awesome. You can add them like I'm doing here and mix with paints to create your own paint colors, or you can mix them with top coats to use them like a glaze. You can sprinkle them in wax, sprinkle them on top of colors, all kinds of really cool things. So I was able to get some really nice sort of lavender purples out of, out of these two, and I really liked it. There's really no rhyme or reason as to where I put the colors on anything here. I wanted uh, pink to be the predominant color because Parker likes pink. So I did the would you bend in the pink and 
uh, part of the saddle blanket and, and the details on, on some of the other parts on there in the pink. And I think the only other time that I really just wasn't doing it at random was when I used the patchouli in between the uh, all the other purple and the pink in order to sort of blend them together so that if my hands were a little bit shaky <laughs> on some of the lines that it wouldn't show up. It was actually pretty easy to find details to paint and it would have been fantastic for shading had I, you know, went so far as to do shading and everything in there. But basically just the raised areas, I chose a color and put them on there and it was actually very fun to, to work with.
Okay, I want to pop in right here in the middle. We're fixing to do a few details on this, but I want to just share a little reminder. I have a mere inches around this thing to work. I probably have two or three inches on that side, maybe a foot on that side, and back there maybe six inches. Very, I, I couldn't move forward an inch right now with this camera here and the light right behind me. So, I, I wanted to encourage you to not wait until you have a huge, big studio to work. You can work where you can work. And I don't have a whole lot of time this morning. Obviously, this is a project that's going over a, a number of days. And today, I have about 15 minutes is all I have. But that's enough time for me to come in and get some details on here. I can move around enough to get up close to it and make that happen. So I, I just wanted to encourage you for a moment, if you have a project, whether it's a hobby horse like this one or whether it's something else, you don't have to wait until you have enough time to do a whole lot of the project. You don't have to wait until you have a perfect place to work. Just get in there and do it. And next thing you know, your project will be done. So let's hop to it. Today, I'm gonna work on some of the details. I'm gonna use um, silver gilding wax and Diamond Moose by Dixie Belle. I had, at first I was gonna use gold on here, now I've decided on silver, so silver it's gonna be. Let's see what we can make happen. I'm just gonna do this part with my finger. Get some on there like that. Let's see if I can come around and make sure you can see. And we're gonna hit it right here. And then I'm gonna hit these details, the would you bend pieces that I put on, just a little bit. This is gonna, oh, it, it gilds it a little bit, obviously, but it also gives it a little bit of a, a vintage look because it ages it just a little bit. And gives it a little extra something, something. Down a little more, we're gonna hit this detail right here. It's like I already did. But I didn't. Not on purpose, I didn't. So I'm just hitting the high spots, the details on here, not even making sure to get them all and that anything's perfect, just to get enough on here. That center part a little more. To age it. And then right here at the back, I'll do the same thing on both sides. We can hit top edges of these. Do the same on the other side. I just want to show you real quick. This is just the moose. I want to make sure and get this buckle and details here.
We put a little bit of this in the ears. And where I want a little bit more detail. Then I'm just gonna do that same thing on the other side. of these cut to um, one inches or actually four of these little ribs by 12 inches but I've decided that on the main that's going to be a little bit too long so I'm using my sucky scissors here and cutting all these in half so they'll be six inch pieces I'm going to start with um, like 10 of each color and uh, the purple, the pink, and the white, and that'll give me um, 20 of each color to start with. just kind of alternated between the three colors here I didn't do like purple pink white purple pink white or anything like that I just eyeballed it since some were falling to the left and some were falling to the right and occasionally I think three different times throughout I actually glued one right to the center so the old parts of the main wouldn't show through to the very top I did sort of switch directions so they would fall down a little bit throughout the or around the ears and then the front couple would come down forward toward the horse's face
also put one more coat of the pink paint on the seat and I did that in a cross hatch pattern because that does give a little bit of a suede look and I like it. I think I like it better than I would have liked it with the fabric. I would have, I had thought about covering it with fabric, but I was really afraid the fabric would get stained or, you know, come loose over time. But I think it turned out great just with the cross hatch pattern and painting it with the uh, Dixie Belle paint. I think it turned out really feminine and cute and my little granddaughter Parker is gonna love it. I can't wait to see her riding on it and, and having a good time. And make sure and tell me if you ever had a rocking horse. Did you call it a hobby horse or a rocking horse? Let me know. And also make sure and watch the rest of the videos on this playlist and the other ladies who are painting in for the spring fling and the pastel colors. And I think they're all gonna be a lot of fun to watch. Thanks and make sure and subscribe and I'll see you next week with another new video.